let's talk about the game Chrono Trigger. So the game starts with our main character Chrono going to the Millennial Fair, a celebration of the fact that it has turned into the year 1000 AD. Really, this is a New Year's party and I'm supposed to believe not a single person here is drunk? On the way, you run into a girl called Marley who wants Chrono to show her around the festival. You get the impression she's a bit of an outsider, but screw it. She wears an expensive pendant and Chrono doesn't have a lot of money. After a while, you go to visit Chrono's childhood friend Luca who has invented a teleport device and wants to show it off, but no one wants to be a test subject. Don't worry, you just need a little rebranding. Call it the next generation iPhone, people will jump at it. Marley, being a dangerous level of optimistic for any human being, says she wants to have a go, but because of her pendant reacting to the machine, she gets accidentally sent through a warp gate. I know, relatable, am I right? Chrono quickly responds and goes on after her, bringing him into the middle of a forest where he's ambushed by these ugly imp creatures. Hmm. <laughs> must have sent him to Scotland. Fortunately, Chrono was carrying his katana with him because what self-respecting citizen doesn't wander around a fairground with offensive weaponry, and we slowly discover he may have been transported to a different point in time where technology doesn't exist. My apologies to Scotland for that racist joke, turns out we're in Ireland. But this is what makes this game different to a lot of other JRPGs. You don't travel the world, you travel through time. This is a great idea because by doing this, it bypasses one of my least favourite things about RPGs. The biggest reason I play role-playing games is to explore, but a lot of them have this really annoying trend of going, Hello there, where would you like to explore today? We got towns, castles, caves or plains, which would you like? Actually, I'd kind of like something a little more interesting. Oh well then, maybe you'd like to visit the cave, or perhaps the town? You already said those. Oh, excuse me, what about the castle or the plains? You said those as well. Well, what about the caves? Said that. The castle? That too. Caves? Is there anything to explore that isn't a town, castle, plain, or cave? Nope, and you better get used to it because you're going to be playing this game for the next 80 hours. You see what I mean? It's like taking a primary school history trip, except setting people on fire is slightly more socially acceptable. But with Chrono Trigger, because you explore different time periods, it allows a much wider variety of places to explore. One minute it's the Middle Ages, and then BAM! Dystopian future. Fighting dinosaurs in prehistoric times? BAM! Jet plane. There are so many cool locations in this game and the story allows such things to happen really easily. You even pick up party members from different time periods. You can recruit a fat robot and no one in prehistoric times gives a flying fuck. People say you should worry about the butterfly effect. These guys are going to have to start worrying about the greenhouse effect. However, it wouldn't be fair to say Chrono Trigger does all this perfectly because bloody hell, why does this game have so many caves? I don't think it should be too hard to make a cave dungeon interesting. You could do something like a mineshaft or ice, or electrically charged rocks, or lava, or literally anything. As long as you make it a little thematic, it could be great. But so many games, Chrono Trigger included, just do the absolute bare minimum. Choose between one of two different color palettes, and don't bother designing the rooms. This is a game where you fight against a dragon tank. Where did the rest of the imagination go? But getting back to the positives, Chrono Trigger does more than one thing out of the usual convention. Another thing that's pretty good is the combat encounters. Battles in this game are never random and usually on the map, so don't worry about wandering the world because believe it or not, someone out there actually realised that exploration without being interrupted might be fun. Mind you, I said not random, that doesn't mean avoidable. Much like walking past a drunk man on the train, you can avoid most of the trouble, but a lot of times, someone is gonna get hurt. Now the no random encounters thing sounds like it should be a good idea because every fight can be scripted to some extent. This means levelling up doesn't become an issue, fights won't outstay their welcome, and you'll never be forced to battle too many things at once. Except there is a level up system to worry about. Boss fights take literal millennia to beat sometimes, and I haven't seen this many disgusting looking monsters since I visited my last anime convention. The actual experience points of leveling up isn't the problem, so to speak. This game also has a separate experience points meter for learning magic called tech points. While you can only have three people in your party at once, even the members outside the fight will level up as you go. This is the case for experience points, but not tech points. You only gain tech points by having a member of the party fight, which wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that characters aren't balanced. Screw what you think about racism, not everyone was created equal. Of the seven people you can choose from, Luca, who I mentioned earlier, is by far the most useless. She doesn't have any healing abilities, her basic attacks do nothing, and any magic she can do, another character can do just as well. I mean, what do you expect? This game allows you to play as a frog and a giant robot, and you want me to not use them on my team? And because Luca was no use in the earlier game, she wasn't in any combat and didn't get any tech points, meaning while the other characters got better and better, she stayed just as useless as when she started. 
You can go ahead and use the phrase different strokes for different folks, but that's the kind of phrase a convicted paedophile might say, and I don't align with those guys. But on the subject of battling, the combat itself is another thing Chrono Trigger does slightly different. Instead of having people in lines and choosing moves, blah de blah, Chrono Trigger has a field system where the space you occupy actually matters. A lot of the attacks are area of effect based, so where you are or where your enemies are positioned actually mean something. Well, it does for a while. After maybe the first quarter of the game, almost all the attacks in Magic you learn either target one enemy or all enemies on screen. Not to mention the way enemies are placed on screen after the first quarter doesn't really allow for any of your area of effect attacks to work as well as you might want. It would help if you could move your characters into the right place or use moves to push enemies into place, but nope. Apparently invading someone's personal space is taboo, even when you're trying to kill them. All in all, the combat is mostly the same as any other RPG, they just made it look a bit nicer. But do you know what the best thing, the absolute greatest thing this game does? It's a short JRPG. I do not have the time to sit through 60 hours of talking into the space with battles and then wandering the world again to collect the 8 super weapons of wanky bollocks or whatever because I can't beat the game without them apparently. Chrono Trigger is just a story that doesn't outstay its welcome with needless padding. I'd like every storyteller out there to take that last comment, pin it on their wall, and if it doesn't sink in, I will personally shove it up your asshole. see how well it sinks in then. And while the pacing of the game's story is great, that really is the only thing it does faultlessly. Everything down to the combat, exploration and mechanics are so nearly perfect. Good, yes, but perfect, no. Chrono Trigger is very much like a New Year's party. Everything starts well, maybe you meet a few interesting characters, but eventually, it devolves into acting like prehistoric people, you stay longer than you intended to, and somewhere down the line, a fight breaks out. 